All right, so can you make a full-time living as a video game composer? Well, the answer is absolutely yes. I mean, I have interviewed tons of full-time professional game composers who make a very healthy and comfortable living writing music exclusively for video games. However, that question has a few caveats that we should probably go over. You see, Brian Schmidt and Game Sound Con are doing some incredible work. Every year they produce a report called the State of Game Audio, where they interview video game composers from all across the world and they ask them all sorts of questions about how much money they charge, how much money they make, and other things relating to the industry of game audio. Lucky for us, he also aggregates salary information, which can be very informative in answering this question of, can you make a living as a game composer? So according to the survey, employed game composers make roughly $80,000 a year, while freelance game composers make around $63,000 a year. This is on average, which really is not bad at all. But there's a problem. In statistics, whenever an extremely high or an extremely low value is introduced, it throws off the average completely and it makes the mean less of a predictor of truth. And unfortunately, this is exactly what happens in game audio. You see, there's a massive income disparity in game audio. Even in this study, there were several people who reported yearly incomes of upward of $400,000. And then there are many people who recorded incomes of less than $10,000. So with that level of disparity, it can be kind of hard to look at the mean and the average as a predictor of truth. But that's why statisticians often use the median. The median exists to account for those very high and very low values. If you remember back from elementary school math, the median uh, is the value which there are an equal number of values to the left as there are to the right. Okay, so now that we know that the median is probably a more informative value to look at, what is the median salary of a video game composer? Well, thankfully, Game Sound Con broke it down by the scope of game. So what they said was we have indie game composers, and indie is typically referencing games with a budget of $0 all the way to around 35000 And those composers make a, a median salary of $8,500 a year. So yikes, we'll, we'll come back to that. The next category is mid-core. Uh, games. Now, mid-core is kind of a nebulous, vague term, but generally speaking, it applies to games that have a budget anywhere from $35,000 to around $500,000. For example, Clash of Clans is considered a mid-core game, and according to this guy on Quora, who knew all of the industry standards and made a bunch of really smart calculations, they likely had a budget of around $400,000. You wouldn't call Clash of Clans an indie game game, but it's not quite a AAA game, it's somewhere in between. Composers that compose for mid-core games typically bring in around $26,880. So at least we're over the poverty level. Barely. So the next category is AAA. Now we all know AAA. AAAs are the Grand Theft Autos and the Halos and the Calls of Duties. Calls of duties. So these budgets typically go from a million plus. So just as an example, Tomb Raider 2013, which Jason Graves composed for, had a budget of $100 million. Composers that work on AAA games are typically bringing in a median income of about $70,000 a year. So what conclusions can we draw from this data? Well, the first is that it's gonna be really tough to make a living as a video game composer if you're composing for mostly indie or mid-core games, especially if you have a family. I can see it maybe working if you're single and have very, very little overhead and razor thin expenses, but it's not exactly scalable. Obviously, the real money is in the AAA game composition, so it's best to get into AAA games as quickly as possible if you wanna make a living as a game composer. Of course, that's kind of like saying it's best to just go join the NBA if you want to play basketball. Come on. What is wrong with me today? So what are game composers to do in the meantime? Are we just 
totally doomed? No, not at all. There are lots of things we can do to make a living as a game composer that don't involve going into the AAA space. If there's one key phrase that you take away from this video, let it be this, diversified income portfolio. This is a concept that I picked up from Sebastian Wolf, but also just about every other composer who's come on my podcast. Even the best composers can't always rely on custom gigs to come around the corner. You need to do something else to fill that time and pay the bills. A lot of the composers that I had on my podcast had over 12 different income streams on any given month. I was in a Facebook group and I asked this question and one successful composer said he has 30 plus income streams every month. So what are these income streams? How do you diversify your income portfolio? Well, my advice would be to take advantage of passive income streams, start investing in passive income streams as quickly as possible. I wrote a comprehensive blog post on passive income streams for game composers and I'll link that in the description. But for this video, here Here's the TLDR list. Licensing your music on sites like Audio Jungle, Pond5, the Unity Asset Store, or the Unreal Marketplace. Creating digital courses on game audio, which you can host on sites like Udemy or produce with services like Kajabi or Thinkific. Writing books or eBooks like Stephen Malin and Winifred Phillips. Creating membership sites like VGM Academy. Creating a brand on YouTube and collecting YouTube ad revenue like 8-Bit Music Theory. And I can guess what a lot of you are thinking, like, okay, I'm just starting out in music composition and you're telling me I need to write a book. Yeah, that's probably something that you're gonna wanna do way down the road and way down the line once you have a little bit more experience. If you want one piece of advice, one suggestion for getting into the passive income world, if you're a new composer, start making music packs for the Unity Asset Store and Unreal Marketplace. There's absolutely no barrier to entry. It forces you to create, it forces forces you to think about branding and graphics and imagery and copywriting and salesmanship. It also teaches you how to hone your craft because you'll need to be constantly composing to fill these music packs. And I mean, the worst that could happen is if nobody buys your music packs, well, now you have material for your demo reel. So for me, it seems like a win-win situation. If you're just starting out, I would start with music packs. And you very well could start earning some revenue from those music packs. Though, one word of caution, with passive income, you definitely need to learn to play the long game. Most passive income streams, you're not gonna start seeing fruit from them till about 60 to 90 days of consistent investment in those streams. So just keep that in mind. So I hope that this video was helpful. I wrote a comprehensive blog post on the topic of how to make money in game audio that covers this topic, as well as a host of other topics, and I'll link that in the description. If you're looking for more of a step-by-step -step plan on how to become a video game composer, I wrote a comprehensive guide on how to become a video game composer, which I will also link in the description. And of course, all of my composer code interviews with industry experts and composers are totally free. You can access those resources plus many more at composercode.com. And I would love to hear in the comments how you've experienced making money in game audio. Do you agree or disagree with my assessment? And what passive income streams, if any, have you taken advantage of? Hopefully we can start a conversation around that. Anyway, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.